My name is Monty Perry. Uh, I'm 62 years old. My friends call me Buddy. Uh, I'm blessed because I do have a lot of friends. God calls me His friend. Uh, when I came to this penitentiary, I've been down a hard road. I knew what I was doing when I raised my hand volunteered for the job in the beginning. And I won't back down. And I get up and I declare war on the enemy every single day. And God bless my brothers. They need a little bit of extra help, God, because they're not quite as stiff shoulders as I am. So we're hoping that prayer gets handled today before the end of the day. Uh, my father, my grandfather, I was born in Bristol, Oklahoma, and he was a free holiness hope. Uh, free homes Pentecostal fire and brimstone preacher. Thank goodness that I had grandparents that taught me the way I should go. And that's where I basically learned how to play the guitar and I got interested. I wanted to do what my grandpa did. And I got my first electric guitar when I was three years old. And uh, I've been playing ever since. And thank goodness the, this, this door to this I'm going to call it a thorn in this prison. This is an open door for me. This is, I, I, I'm thankful for this. This is the very end of my, my job. And I'm so blessed to be sitting here telling the truth and standing on this rock. But, uh, you know, when they hire you here as a chapel worker or on the praise team, you get on probation. And I had no idea that so many people are spiritually asleep. I had no idea. I thought everybody knew how to wake up and go to God every first thing in the morning. I thought everybody knew that. Then I realized people don't listen. They watch too much TV. They don't listen to the right thing. And they don't help their brother who might need that second pair of shoes that you've got in your closet. We're supposed to get up serve the Lord God Almighty with all our mind, our heart, and our energy, spare no expense, and love our brothers as we would want them to love us. There's no greater honor on earth than a brother who will give his life for another brother. I'm here. I'm living, per I'm living proof that Jesus did that first. And it's still being done to this very day. And I'm blessed to say that. And that's pretty much it. And it has led me to a spot because I was willing to come over here and, and just listen and give it a, a good old college try. Uh, I'm on the DNF unit. It's the old uh, faith and character pod. Uh, DNF stands for Defender of the Faith. A lot of people call it other names, but there's special good names, good words to be said about this yard. This yard was here built for one purpose. This is built because this is training for frontline warriors for God's army. And uh, I'm not afraid to uh, not give my opinion for five, six years to somebody that doesn't want to hear it. Eventually they're going to go, man, what makes you always smile and not complain? And that's my end. And then I keep it simple, and I, I try not to uh, I try not to put a big emphasis on what I believe is mine and what I believe is theirs, and the way they've always. I try not to do that because I I grew up in a church that was built on fear. God bless them; they did their job for me, and I'm and I'm blessed to be sitting here. I know they're in heaven right now, saints of God. Jesus didn't come here to scare anybody. Ever. Matter of fact, He didn't even want people to tell what He was doing here. He did it really low key. And even when He did get a little bit of the glory from the people, they took it the wrong way. So He had to sneak off and go to the wilderness and He had to do some of the things. There's, they, they say a lot of the miracles didn't even get wrote down. And I could probably run my mind back to that film day and probably it's probably true but he uh, he didn't have to go around and tell him speaking using his mind we're snared by the words of our mouth and 
Luckily, the Faith and Character program, I graduated in the very last class, the biggest class ever. Uh, one of my brothers, that I was one of the first guy on your list here, Mr. Rico Cole, he was in my class. We sat right up front. Uh, we shared we shared our knowledge because I don't want to be what I was before, and I'm not even going to give that voice. But I know one thing: I didn't have to change by myself. There were several people in there that turned a complete about face and started listening to the Spirit of God. That's the only God we have. The Bible says we're supposed to get another comforter. Now, I think that's a true statement because people don't really have the mind of God. If they did, most of them would waste 1,399 day, minutes of their day worrying about it and spend one minute doing it. So, I, I'm just blessed to be here. This, this music program here and all the classes. I've got so many certificates. You know, certificates piece of paper. Now, when I can sit down on the guitar and take somebody who's not trained in music, who like, would never admit that they had a dream when they were a kid. God bless them. Everybody needs to get their dream back. Even if it's on stage at church, look how nice this chapel is. This is uh, this thing is donated by people who were here before us, uh, Tony Mack and uh, Dixie Pebworth. Uh, you know, Wings of Freedom. You know, somebody that's really got it bad. All you got to do is just do the program. So my edge on life is. I kind of like being a little bit set aside to watch because I, I believe I'm supposed to watch. And I write my prayers down. The day I started writing my prayers down was the day the first one came true. And it was in the faith class. A good buddy of mine who's at Weeds of Freedom. His name's Joe Sherrod. His mom died. And I just... I wrote down that prayer. He had four life sentences without. Stage four cancer. He was the first one to leave that yard. He's at Wings of Freedom right now. I wear a sweatshirt every night. So, miracles happen 24 hours a day. It just depends on how you look at it. If you look at it right, and don't push it, it's going to be all right. Yes, I, I, when I first came here, was in, the very first practice with the praise team was in this room. And at that time, we had about 15 guys in the choir. <clears throat> and they had heard me play the guitar over in the gym. So everybody invited me to come, man, come sign up for the praise team. I said, wow, how do you do that? You just, I, I don't think about it, you know. I, I open up and let, God, let the Holy Spirit play that guitar. Because that's God's weapon. Those strings, those ten strings that King David used. He never sent the warriors into battle without the house of the high priest, the Levites. Because they were skilled with their hands and they would they were skilled with instruments and they obeyed immediately. And they had to they had to separate themselves from everybody else because all that snaring of everybody else's mouth wouldn't have made them what they are. Mm -hmm. They're still here to this very day. I can honestly say that King David's army gets started right up here on that stage every single time they let us come in here. Right. We and we don't hold that as anything. That's that's not that's not why I'm happy. I'm happy because I've seen a lot of bad stuff. And now I get to see a lot of good stuff. Something that I get to voice that turns out better because I 
took the time to listen with my spiritual ear. Yeah. I'm thankful. I'm blessed. Super blessed. I wish I could give everybody on the planet what I have. Well, of course, I have a little bit of... I'm proud of the way everybody's backed me up and I've actually been able to give some gift and actually enjoy some myself and then finally meet some people that chose to be here too. They knew I was coming. They wouldn't have it any other way. I got friends on this yard that I could sit and watch paint dry and eat poison bologna sandwiches and still smile and be happy. We're blessed because they let us have the guitars on our unit. And they just, I prayed, to, I wrote down a prayer about put the guitars on all the units in the whole state of Oklahoma. We can't take the music away from the kids. That's what this whole thing's about. Got to give it back because the devil's a liar. Too many, too many of them got robbed from their families. The ones that are still kicking it, that, wow, we thought that was God was gone, never heard from. Them. All those artists are truly, really just ancient blues musicians that have heart and a soul for singing for the Lord. And I don't believe there's anything about any music that could possibly be judged evil. Just depends on the eye of the beholder and the closed spiritual ear of the beholder. So, music is my life. It always has been. It always will be. And uh, thank goodness that I ended up in this prison. And you know, it was... It was, it was labeled the gladiator school, and, and I don't have any fear. And sometimes that's kind of stupid. But this is my, this is my life lesson that I'll impart to anyone who thinks they want to do that life. The only good master that trains any art will always, always, every single time, never voice something that makes your student feel like they didn't do their job. Ever. And that's what God did. That's what Jesus did. He never spoke bad stuff. He didn't say, oh yeah, yeah, uh, Andrew, you're, you're a bad guy. Uh, you know, he picked us on purpose because we're warriors. So, as long as we have that warrior attitude and we show up every time for everything possible until our energy runs out, every now and then I get to get up on stage with my new groups of guys who are just really coming along. And I'll and I tell you what, when that happens, I wave that banner and I proclaim that. I wave that banner. I'm not here to do job, God's job. I'm here to wave that banner. 